Hello and welcome to another edition of Fangirl Thursday. I am super excited to share tonight's guest with you guys. I have been stalking this particular author for probably about seven or eight years. I am proud to say I came along, I want to say when her second book was just coming out. So I have got to watch her grow and expand into becoming a USA Today best-selling author of 40 plus novels and novellas. I am stoked to be sharing tonight with you guys the amazing and talented Carolyn Ritter Aspenson. Hello, hello. Hello. I butcher your name all the time. I don't know how often. I know you have no idea. I had to practice (laughs) because, and I don't know why, but I, I mean, I talk about your books on the show all the time and I always say writer instead of Ritter and it's just stuck in my head and I say it and I go yep if she were listening right now she'd correct me but she's not here so (laughs) it's okay I call the character in my new series Ritter because her last name is Ryder and I screw that up all the time (laughs) so it's for it's forgivable (laughs) <laughs> well, I am excited to have you here. You have lots and lots going on. I'm going to pop up this little image for just a moment. Let's see if I can make that any. Well, it's, it didn't get much bigger. <laughs> I tried. Nope, that didn't make it bigger either. <laughs> I can't read it anyway. <laughs> Okay, there we go. We'll try. Um, Look at that collection of books. And that is not everything. I couldn't fit all of them on there. And I probably worked on this for about 45 minutes to an hour because I had to keep shifting stuff and making it smaller and sliding things around. And I thought, holy crap, this is not going to hold everything. (laughs) I needed it a certain size in order for it to fit on the video. And so that it would fit on Facebook so I could share it. So Mm -hmm. it is what it is. But wow, just take a minute to look at that. Multiple series, multiple books in each series. I mean, just wow. You have come so far from unfinished business, which is when I met you. And just wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's, um, It's been a crazy ride. That, that's the best way I can describe it. I I look at that picture and I think, wow, I did that, you know. <laughs> and I it's uh, I it really means that I have no life, <laughs> no life. So, well, okay. I'm sure the it. dogs and the cats appreciate you being home, even if you're typing away all the time. At least you're you're physically there. Yes, usually with one dog on one leg, a cat sitting here as I type, and then another <laughs> dog laying next to me with his head on the computer. So that's usually how I write. The other um, cat just stares at me from the corner and gets mad that the that one cat's on me. So <laughs> dogs and cats play a prominent role in a lot of your books as well. Um, why don't we start quickly and talk about the Angela um, Panther series, the first book in that is Unfinished Business. And we'll just kind of flow over each series rather quickly because tonight we are focusing on your Rachel Ryder series. And I can't wait to talk about that. Okay. Um, What do you want to know? (laughs) Um, Tell us just uh, briefly kind of what the Angela series is about. Okay. Okay. Um, That one I started writing Unfinished Business to honor my mom when she passed away. And I'm going to choke up, so I apologize. Um, And when I started it, I asked a friend who had worked at a publishing company as an editor if she would read it and just see if I I had any skill. Because I always wanted to write. I always wrote stuff. I tried writing a few books before that and, you know, never did anything with them. Um, Mm So the first few pages were ridiculously depressing. And I thought, this is this is not what I was going for here. So I changed my idea completely and I gave my friend about 50 pages and she, she did it for me as a favor, fully Mm -hmm. thinking that I couldn't write. 
And she came back to me the next day and she said, you have a gift. And I went, Ooh, okay. She said, you can't punctuate, but you have a gift. <laughs> it's just true. Punctuation is not my friend. I have, I'm a comma person and a fragment person. But um, so she kind of helped me through that first book. And then I mm -hmm. sent it to a developmental editor and she even said, you did a really good job on this. This, this is, the story is well-written. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended it in a way that would allow me to write a second book, mm -hmm. but I didn't know if that book would sell. And I knew nothing about selling books at that point. So I literally just published it on Amazon and then went, okay, what do I do now? So that series, that book took off and it did very well. And so I mm -hmm. decided to go ahead and write the second one. And now I'm on five in that one. I think I finished five recently last year um, mm -hmm. with a bunch of novellas in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I wanted to break into a different market. That's, that's a, that started out not as a mystery and became a mystery. And I wanted to get into the cozy mystery market because I watch Hallmark I have several mm -hmm. cozy mystery, mystery author friends. So I started the Lily Sprayberry series. Mm -hmm. And Lily is a realtor in a small town in Georgia. Um, all of my my books are based in Georgia because that's where I live. So I can, you know, I can drive around and see what what I need, or I, I understand mm -hmm. the area and I understand the people. Um so she she's a realtor. Um she, you know, accidentally saw, falls into crimes and solves them. And I think there's there's seven in that seven one. okay <laughs> seven books in that oh yeah you could probably count that couldn't you yeah seven books seven <laughs> and, okay and then then some novellas in there um, that is my Angela series is not published with my publisher I kept kept that self published that one was republished with my publisher I'm not writing in that series this year um, we're mm -hmm. trying some different marketing with that one and then. I thought, well, I really enjoy the paranormal. So I went back to write, because Angela has a ghost in her series. Mm -hmm. um, and then several ghosts, actually. So I started the Chantilly Adair series, which is a cozy series with a woman that sees ghosts. She falls down a set of stairs, hits her head, and all of a sudden, you know, ghosts are everywhere. And she solves crimes in a small town. She's a historical society manager for um, Castleberry, Georgia. And the book I just finished, which comes out, May 18th. Gosh, that's next week, isn't it? Um, that's deceased and desist. And that's she's dealing with a school bully from when mm -hmm. she was in high school who falls out of a deer hunting stand in a tree. And he insists that he's been killed. You know, he was murdered, but the police say no. So that series is there's some good, good, solid characters in there that I enjoy writing. There's a, a couple older women in there that are fun. And I really enjoy writing the older women because they can say whatever they want. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And I enjoy that. Um, I also write the um, Abby O'Dell witch series, which is obviously paranormal. And mm -hmm. she's a younger character. Most of my characters are in their forties. Um, she's younger. She just, she's just in her thirties and she's mm -hmm. a witch in a, in a witchy town and she balances the the life between human stuff and paranormal stuff and solves crimes. She's an author. She used to be a ghost writer, but now she mm -hmm. writes her own series. And um, I just released a book in that, I think, a few months ago. You did. Uh, okay. spring. <laughs> and then I you have them, um, yeah. another one coming out in the fall. Okay, thank you. And I, well, I write them far enough in advance for the publisher that by, by the by time they publish them, I, I'm on to like the second or third book. Mm -hmm. them, so I completely forget that I've done it. Um, I also have the Pooch Party series, which I was really excited about, um, but it's not turned out as well as I'd like. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's sold okay, but I, I think you had the same issue. People were worried that the dogs in my series were going to be mistreated. Yes. And, um, so. The book, the main character does a rescue and she, she helps out with the humane society or something. If I remember yes. correctly, cause I've yes. only read the first one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and she, um, 
I, I was worried that, you know, some mistreated dog was going to come in that she was going to have to take care of or something was going to happen and the dog, something was going to happen and maybe a dog was going to die. Cause I had a conversation with you before I started it. I'm like, no, <laughs> none of the dogs died. Right. <laughs> I, I can't handle that. So I, I need to know I before I start the series and I guess, it just, I had a certain level of anxiety going into it. Mm -hmm. So it was harder for me to sit back and enjoy that. And I am more of a paranormal reader in yeah. general anyway. Yeah, she, and she's so, paranormal and she's kind right. of dry in a lot of ways, which I tried to be different with her character. And she's mm -hmm. come out of her shell a little bit, but people's big, they have an issue with that series. And it's that they think the dogs are going to be hurt. So I, I, I'm not sure how to handle that because originally she was bringing puppies to parties to try and get them adopted. Mm -hmm. And, um, but now she protects the dogs and, you know, there's always the risk of like this last one, the dogs, there was a, a um, dog fighting ring that they needed homes for the dogs. So she was looking for homes. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, it's a, I enjoy the series, but I thought it'd be great because there are dogs and, and mm -hmm. people, once they read it, they tend to read the rest of them, but they're hesitant to read it. So there I am selling my book real well. Go out and read that book. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to put like a disclaimer yeah, on Amazon do. no dogs that are says no dogs were harmed in the writing yeah. of this novel. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And so then I have, and my publisher likes this. They like me to stick with the paranormal. So mm -hmm. I wrote another series. I've started another series. It was originally for a different publisher that um, I got the rights back to. And that's um, about a woman, a, another witch. And um, she's an assistant to a real estate agent. I don't know mm -hmm. why about, I write about real estate because I know nothing about it. So <laughs> I have to call my real estate friends and ask them. Um, and she basically sells haunted houses. She's trying to solve the mysteries in the homes so she can sell them. Um, and I've written two in that. I may write some more. That is self-published. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I may write another one this year. It's on my schedule, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, my primary focus is my, my thriller series, which is the mm -hmm. Rachel Ryder series. Um, and I'm on book, I'm writing book three of that one right now. So that's that's where I've been putting most of my effort because those this the cozies are anywhere from forty to fifty five thousand words, mm -hmm. and these are this one's about eighty five to ninety five thousand. So they they take a little more time. So, and for anyone who is new to your writing, um, you guys are going to love any of these series that you pick up, including the ones about the dogs. Don't, don't necessarily <laughs> listen to me talk about it because I am such a baby, such a tender heart when it comes to anything like that. I, I don't watch cartoons or movies in which there is a dog starring in it. Yeah. Um, even if you come back and tell me nothing happened to that dog at some point in time in that movie, that animal is going to be heartbroken and alone. <laughs> and I'm going to cry <laughs> in the corner. Like, you know, my grandma just died. Really. It's yep. going to hit me that bad. Yep. So because I avoid them all to together. Yep. Um, I don't have a problem when they're more of like a secondary character because you have dogs and cats in some of your other books as well. But there was something about this one. I just just kept waiting for something to happen. <laughs> Even though you told me that everything was going to be fine. I just, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I worked myself up too much about it. But um, for any of you guys who are watching and listening tonight who want to check it out, um, if you look over in the comments section, you will see that I posted a link to Carolyn's website and everything is located there, including the novellas, which I could not fit on my graphic <laughs> because like I said, she's got, I think we counted and there's 41 books that, that is amazing. And, um, of course these cozies have been cranking out like nobody's business and they are such fun and easy reads. I think you guys are really going to, to enjoy those a lot. But our primary focus for tonight is to talk about your new series, and that is uh, the Rachel Ryder series. So I am excited to dive in and talk about that a little bit. The first book, which is out now, is called Damaging Secrets. And 
it is the first book in the Rachel Ryder series. If you guys check over in the comments, you will see a link to purchase that one as well. So what was it like to make that transition from writing cozy to writing a crime thriller? Okay, so my last Angela book, um, was it the last one? No, my second to last one, Unexpected Outcomes, mm -hmm. I felt was a as close to a thriller as I was going to get, a suspense crime thriller, you know, not like mm -hmm. a... Not like a, a Dean Coons or a, you know, Stephen. Is that the one where the lady's body's found at the river? Yes. yes. Okay. So that, okay. one, that one got <laughs> a little darker for me. So, yes. I, I, so I felt like that was good practice, but um, this is hard <laughs> so, um, because it's a police procedural. So I have to be accurate. And mm -hmm. I, you know, like my friend, that's a police officer who he actually, um, he's, he's not just a police officer. He runs the academies here. He's on SWAT. He's very, you know, well-versed in what he does. And he gives me my Georgia stuff and he has through all of my Angela books too. Um, but he keeps telling me, you know, you have, it's fiction. So you can manipulate it to suit your purpose in the book. And I try not to do that because I want it to be accurate because I don't want someone to email me and say, my husband's a cop. And he said, that's not true, you know, because inevitably I'm going right. to be saying that. Um, so the story, when I, I spoke to my editor, I, I got to work with an editor who has worked with people like Harlan Coben. Um, so I was very excited to work with this, you know, big time editor on this book. And we, we developed the story together and I would, you know, he, I, he asked me for a summary. So I gave him two paragraphs and he called me and laughed. He goes, no, no, no. A summary is like an outline of the book in paragraph form. I, I've never done that before. So, so I panicked and gave him, and I said, okay, I'm going to need a week. So I wrote a 39 page outline for the first book. Wow. And my, my blood pressure was like this the whole time because <laughs> I'd never done that. And it was so stressful, but it made writing the book much easier. So I'm grateful for that. And then we did that for the next three books. So there's four books so far in the series. The third book that I'm writing now, I have gone totally off that outline and I've started <laughs> something different. But but Damaging Secrets, I really enjoyed writing that. and I And I think that I did a good job. Um, I'm overly critical of everything that I write, and I, mm -hmm. you know, I could go, I could go back into it and rewrite and read something and go, oh, that's horrible. And my husband will laugh at me because I'm very, you know, I'm very critical of my own stuff. But um, it's a solid book with a solid storyline and a, a very human but damaged character. And she starts out as being tough. She's got to play tough because then you don't. She can't let her emotions come out. Something very tragic happened to her. And she mm -hmm. doesn't want that to disrupt her life, but that runs her life. And she mm -hmm. can't focus on, on anything internally until she deals with that. And it takes her a while to figure that out. Um, but every, she's against everything emotionally that shows feeling, you know, so she's, mm -hmm. but then she, but she can't help but show feeling it comes out. So She's she's also a small town in a small town in a wealthy small town in Georgia, but she comes from Chicago. And so she has experience that the small town good old boy network is like, mm, no, that mm -hmm. that doesn't happen here. And it does happen here. So it does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she she's learning that small town small crime town. is bigger than Chicago crime. And it's it's nastier because in Chicago, the crimes are committed and everybody knows it and they they deal with it mm -hmm. but in her small town. It's manipulative and it's behind yes. the scenes. And so and they will smile and pat you on the back and tell you how great you are while they're stabbing you in the back, you know, mm -hmm. five minutes later. So mm -hmm. it's it's um it's been a challenge, but it's been really enjoyable to write. And I really like that first story a lot. I, I really like that first story a lot. And well, I'm really excited. Very to enjoyable to read as well. Okay. We have definitely okay. enjoyed this darker, grittier side. She gets to swear, which I don't get to do in the cozies. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
That was fun for me. So. That's always nice. She went off a little steam. Um, yeah. <laughs> if we had a peek at your Google search history, what would we see? What kind of things oh, have you had to look up um, this book? Like, are you showing up on the FBI um, you know, okay. list at this point? I, I Google. Okay, so today I Googled how to hack the um, the um, uh, Homeland Security. <laughs> so, so yes, I think you've officially yeah, made the yeah, list. Then. Yeah, I probably got a little <laughs> little tag on me. Um, and I was researching who has done it. Um, then I Googled work, you know, drones in criminal cases. So that was, you know, and, and mm -hmm. how to, how to, how drones can discover murders. Um, I'm all about the Mexican cartel right now. So Ooh. I'm Googling all kinds of things on that, but for my cozies, I really get, I, I, I know I'm getting tagged because it's what, what poison is least recognizable in the human body. <laughs> um, oh, wow. You know, what tools are best to bury a, you know, what can I, what, what tools are best to dig a, a deep hole? You know, what mm -hmm. um, blunt objects kill fastest, <laughs> you know, where oh, do I wow. it on the head? So, <laughs> yeah. So I Who would have thought that the cozies would require more um, Googling than the I thriller. Know, I know, <laughs> but you've got to be really creative with cozies. Like my first character died because she got hit in the back of the head with a, a cast iron skillet. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to You got to be creative with that, you know, for yes. a good old police procedural. You just got to be it's got to be ugly. You know, it's got to be yes. somebody doing something awful where, you know, this woman, you know, could have been baking pies for somebody and then whacked, you know, <laughs> got whacked yeah. on the head. So it's a little different. So you've written several different series, several different genres now. Um do you work on one series at a time or do you have multiple books happening and being written at the same time? How do you, how do you juggle all that? Okay. I had my eyes operated on recently. Mm -hmm. So I have new bionic eyes, so I don't have to. That's why we canceled last. No, yes. no, you were sick last no, time. Was, yeah, and sure then you were going to have surgery like the following week. So we couldn't get you yes. rescheduled. We yeah. had to wait till you recuperate. Yeah, because I didn't <laughs> want to do it with my goggles on that I had to wear. So swim goggles. So before the eye <clears throat> surgery, I could, I could write in the mornings because that's when I write the best. And mm -hmm. then I would do stuff during the afternoon and then I could write at night. Um, mm -hmm. By this time, the screen, the white background is, mm -hmm. even if it's darkened, like I make it less bright, I, mm -hmm. the words disappear on it. So it's going to take about six more months for my eyes to get normal. So I can't write at night. So now I'm way behind <coughs> on my Posey's books because I thought I could do, I thought I could keep up my schedule and do mm -hmm. my Rachel book during the day. And then my, I would do like 2,500 words a night on the cozy that, you know, I had coming up, mm -hmm. but I just, I can't, by that time I can't see. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're a little blurry right now. Cause it's what it's seven, almost eight o'clock. So, so, mm -hmm. so no, not right now. I'm not, I'm not doing two books at a time, but I used to do that. And it was, it was a good way for me to refresh for, you know, cause it, it gets hard to, to write the same characters, you know, all the time. So when I had mm -hmm. a break and could write someone else, that would actually make me feel, it would give me better stories for the mm -hmm. other characters. So. Which series has been your favorite to write and why? The Angela series because of Mel. Um, Mel is the best friend of the main character mm -hmm. and Mel has no filter. Um, no. <laughs> she is extremely loyal and she's snarky and funny. Um, she's very similar to a very good friend of mine who she's modeled after. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I wrote, like I said, I wrote that book after my mom died. And mm -hmm. during that time, I became friends with somebody that I went to high school with who I did not like in high school. And we laughed because in my senior yearbook, there's a big X over her face. <laughs> so as a matter of fact, she just mentioned that to me today. Um, and I just didn't like her. And I had no reason to dislike her, but we became friends on Facebook and she 
for whatever reason, was the person I went to when my mom died. I talked to her through that process. So um, she is, several of those conversations in those books have been between Genevieve and I. Um, we have this odd fascination with cupcakes when we're, when we're together. But Mel lets me say whatever Mel wants, and I enjoy that. And she just has some, some of course, I can't think of any, but she just has some lines that are, just perfect and like like she eats food and she she just she yes she food <laughs> corns when she eats that's what we call it and that's what genevieve does i mean genevieve's kids get grossed out listening to her eat because she sounds like she's you know you know intimately involved with the food but mel has made my that book that series the best and then the the main ghost character is modeled after my mom so that's been fun. Fran is an absolute hoot I don't think we really touched on that a lot when we were talking about the individual series in the beginning but the Angela Panther series um Angela after her mother passes away she develops this this psychic ability she's able to see and communicate with ghosts and her mother actually comes back Fran and it's so cool the interaction that they have together and that she's able to see her mom as a ghost and fran is just the absolute best if your mom was anything like fran <laughs> then oh my gosh everybody would have loved her yeah, she because was she was that very character much is like just fran. amazing i love fran yeah she's she was very <laughs> much like fran she said what she wanted she you know, she got in your face. Um, you know, she would tell me, you know, and this is going to sound horrible, but you just have to, you have to know my mom. I would say, look, mom, I've lost five pounds. And she'd say, you look anorexic. That was her word, anorexic. And then when I would gain weight, she'd go, why are you gaining weight? You're going to get fat. <laughs> Make up your mind, mom. And, you know, and, and she would say, she would call me and say, you need to order me a pizza. Call and order me a pizza. I'm like, mom, you just picked up the phone to call me. Can you not pick up the phone and call a Roman Kitchens? She's like, oh, you just do it. <laughs> so, My mother-in-law does that, and she yeah. lives across town, not in another yeah. state. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I would literally do those things for her. But my mother would, you know, she would talk to me about my kids and you know when my daughter was 13 if she was having sex and I'm like mom I, I don't I don't want to know if she's having sex but you got to find out because if she is you need to get her on birth control I'm like I was not on birth control at 13 well you weren't having sex because you had those braces I'm like oh dear god okay so, <laughs> so yes she's very much very much like oh my like gosh that. that is hilarious oh the my only goodness. reason I didn't have sex at 13 was nothing about my morals or values it was my braces it was the braces <laughs> so, <laughs> See, she had a plan all along. <laughs> Apparently she did. <laughs> that, that would definitely hilarious. be my, my favorite series. Oh my gosh. It it is it's of course the first series that I read. Um Unbreakable Bonds is book two, and it had just come out, and you were looking for reviewers and bloggers at the time, and I hit yep. you up, and I'm like, I'm a new blogger, and I want to read your book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, here, take it. And <laughs> I've been here ever since. There's no good <laughs> <to> me. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate um, that. I have thoroughly enjoyed everything, um, including the dog series. <laughs> <laughs> as well, much as, of it as I could read. Thank you. <laughs> um, Let's see. Let's talk about side characters because you write some of the absolute best side characters. We just talked about Mel, but in your cozy series, you write about in, in both the Chantilly series and in the Lily Sprayberry series, you have some older ladies in there that really give off the golden girls vibe or, um, Oh, what's that other movie I always compare them to? Steel Magnolias. Yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, yes, definitely. Steel Magnolias. Um, so who's your favorite side character from your cozies? Okay, I'm going to go with Bonnie. Um, okay. Okay. Bonnie from, okay, you got to work with me here because. Bonnie is in back. Lily's series. Yes. And Bonnie, Bonnie was the one that got the shotgun and shot off the shotgun, if I remember correctly. Wow. Um, <laughs> both of them, 
them. Um, uh, Bonnie is with Henrietta, and they have yes. the two fellows in town that they yes. swap back and forth. Yes, and and it's and that sounds far dirtier than what it is, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <the street>. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they you know they they each have their advantages. Um, I like Bonnie because she's 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 a little nuts, you know, mm -hmm. Henrietta is a little nuts too, but Bonnie will, she will go, she will cross the line and she will get herself arrested and, and well, so will Henrietta. I don't know. I kind of like, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like both of them. Um, they have no filter. None. And, absolutely and, none. That is what is so fantastic about yeah. them and they're allowed to be that way because they have earned it they have yeah. been polite you know they've gone through life doing what they're supposed to do and now they're older and they just want to say what they want and they want to do what they want and they get to you know they give um, me goals they really do <laughs> <laughs> me too me too and they do they trade off those two men for purely for ad you know one needs a ride here one needs a ride here you know and it's it has nothing to do with intimacy it's convenience mm -hmm. and these two guys older men just adore them and they follow them around like lost puppies and old man goodson is you know he's kind of i picture him as like a a country sean connery like he's a country 007 because he does oh. things behind the scenes um yes. in a couple of the books that you don't mm -hmm. know what he's doing and so that kind of makes him you know a little spicy on the side <laughs> so but yeah definitely definitely those two women i think are and i like dell from the chantilly series too so mm -hmm. gosh i just she's like all the other women too i she's mean feisty. She's... oh yeah <laughs> yep. she is feisty so where is your favorite place to write whether it be at home at a coffee shop wherever <sighs> um I write at an Atlanta bread, which is a kind of like a Panera or, you know, mm -hmm. a, a cafe. I write there every morning during the week. I go there. The woman that manages it is a friend of mine now. Her name is Olga. And I started going before everything closed down mm -hmm. and got to know her a little bit. And then it closed down. And as soon as it opened, she sent me a text message because I had given her my phone number and she said, we're back. So they opened at like <laughs> seven. I know. They open at seven, but she lets me in when they open, when she gets there. So mm -hmm. she gets there every morning. I text her at six o'clock, you know, when you're going to be there and she, she'll text, I'm here now. So I literally get up, feed the dogs, throw on some kind of outfit and, you know, pull my hair up and go. And then I write there for a couple hours because she has my favorite coffee. So, um, but I can't sit. I have sciatic nerve problems, so I can't mm -hmm. sit there for too long. I have this cushion thing, but... I feel like a jerk wearing that. It just feels uncomfortable sitting on that all the time. So mm -hmm. I'll go there for about two hours and then she always makes me breakfast. <laughs> so, which, you know, they're very sweet there. So I get my coffee, I write there and then I come home and I can't write in my office because Capone doesn't like it. Um, <laughs> for those that don't know, um, very quickly, um, Carolyn has two cats and two dogs. Yeah. Are there more cats? Well, two we cats. have a, a, a temporary cat with my son, but generally it's two cats. Okay. So. so two cats and two dogs, and it's Pony or Capone and Allie, and they are um, pit mix. Pit boxers. Yep. Pit boxers. Okay. And if anyone follows you on Facebook, then they know that Pony is very needy. <sighs> um, very needy. <laughs> That's probably an understatement. Um, yeah. Mine yes, are, my dogs are very time oriented. They are on a schedule and they want to stick to that schedule. And when it reaches a certain time, they want to eat. And when it reaches the next time they're there and they're like, okay, get off the computer. It's nine yeah. o'clock. I should be in the bed because yeah. my friends give me such a hard time. They're like, you go to bed so early. And I'm like, but I lay there and I read. That's what I, I watch do. TV. Because I'm the dogs sleep. are ready for bed. And I'm like, but <laughs> if I don't go, the dog will pester me yeah. like relentlessly. That's yeah. what Capone does. So, yeah. Well, um. <laughs> he, he doesn't like it upstairs because, I, I don't know if you can see, but I have windows mm -hmm. that he can sit and look out of. But it's mm -hmm. not on the main floor 
where the door is that Allie is running to every 30 seconds because she hears something outside. So he's got to get up, the poor dog, go down the stairs, determine if that's important, and then come back up upstairs. And he doesn't like that. He would rather be on the couch downstairs. So I now write downstairs on the couch, but mm -hmm. we're moving in, I don't know, what's the day today's? In, in, in two weeks, we're moving mm -hmm. to Labor Memorial Day weekend, and my office will be in the basement. And I, we have these two chairs that they sit in in the den. Those mm -hmm. are going in my office. So I'm hoping that that will help me <laughs> be able to sit in my office because they'll be right in front of the windows and they'll get to look outside. And maybe I can actually sit in my office. We'll see. But right now I sit on the couch. Most it's of the time. ridiculous what we do for our animals. I, um, I actually have a recliner in my bedroom that sits in the corner and, um, its sole purpose is so that the bloodhound can sleep. <laughs> she has a dog bed and she, she starts out in the dog bed mm -hmm. and then she moves to the recliner. If she gets hot, she moves to the floor and then she goes back to the recliner. But the recliner is kind of her, her spot in the bedroom. Yeah. And if it keeps her out of the bed and off the top of me, then I'm okay with that because I have a hundred pound lab that sleeps between my husband and I. <laughs> and there's not a lot of room left in that king yeah. size bed when you put yeah. the three of us in there. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Allie sleeps in the spare room on the spare bed. She has a bed in our room, but that's not mm -hmm. acceptable. So Capone stretches out on his bed and her bed. And then in the mid at like 5 a.m., the cat comes up to me and paws at me. So she gets mm -hmm. on the bed. And then the dogs come in and pony whines to me until I let him up on the bed. And then Allie hears him and I hear mm -hmm. her thump off the bed and she comes in and lays with us. So but they That's don't sleep funny us, because my bloodhound Lucy will sleep in the spare bedroom on the bed during the day. She yeah. rotates from that bed to the couch to my bed. <laughs> Um, and yeah, but at night she wants to be in the bedroom where I'm at, but she wants to yeah. be in her chair sleeping. Yeah. So Allie likes the guest room because there's a window to the main, to the main street, you know, to our cul-de-sac mm -hmm. so she can guard us. Oh, absolutely. He's very protective. Capone's oblivious. He's just snoring <laughs> on the ground. Good for him. He's, he's oblivious, but he's, a, he, he is very needy. But so, yeah, I spend most of my time writing on the couch. That's going to change. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Um, so you touched on this a little bit while ago when you talked about writing your 39 page um, synopsis there. Um, are you a plotter? Are you a pantser? Do you kind of hybrid it all together? How do you, what do you do? I, I have aspirations to plot very detailed which is what I did with the damaging secrets book. And that mm -hmm. was, that went very well for me. Um, the second book I plotted and then I kind of picked at it as mm -hmm. I wrote, like the stories will go on their own. They'll like go off on their own and characters mm -hmm. will do their own things. And I used to listen to authors talk and they'd say, Oh, well, you know, my characters tell me what they want to do. And I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> totally get it now. Totally get it now because they develop their personalities, you know? And, yes. and then you're like, well, she wouldn't do that, you know, or she would do this. So, so I do both, but I, I, I'm a type A person in general. Everything has a place. Um, even though I showed you before we went live, what my, office currently looks like because I'm mm -hmm. moving. I'm always organized mm -hmm. less now that I've had menopause, but I've hit menopause, but, but still generally or like, you know, if you need a pair mm -hmm. of scissors, I can tell you where they are. You know, I, yes. I know where every pair of scissors in my house is unless my husband's taken them. But, um, but when it comes to my books, I plot less and I write more. So I'm, I'm really trying to balance that out because when you plot, you don't have as much editing to do. When you pants it, you go back to the very beginning and your your second draft is almost totally different than your first. Oh, wow. um, so at least for me, because I read that and go, no, 10 pages later, she does this, which, you know, so, so I have to, I take detailed notes when I, when I pants it, which becomes a hassle. So it's better to do the notes first. I'm trying to do that. Trying, trying, not very well. <laughs> so. 
let's go back to talk about damaging secrets a little bit. Um, this is the first book. The second book is Hunted Girl, and it comes out on June the 1st. And then the third book is already planned as well. The yes. pre-order is not up for that one yet. Not I did yet. check on Amazon before we came on. Um, do you anticipate that that one will come out uh, this year? Yes, I think it's supposed to. I feel like September, but I could be wrong. Um, you know what? I should have it written down. I'll, I'll check. I have a notebook. Okay. <laughs> I've got it somewhere packed up. Um, Let's see. It might not be September. It might be January. I honestly don't know. It can't be September because I'm writing it now. No. All right. I have Hunted Girl. June the 1st and then in the holiday hills we have another witch bites the dust coming out October 19th and then moving on to 2022 we have Deja Vu which will be the sixth book in the Chantilly Adair series and then I have a note that you're releasing two additional books in the Rachel series but I don't have any dates Okay, then I lied because <laughs> I feel like it's September 22nd. I don't know why I think that. It may uh, tell us on Amazon. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. I you would think I would know I, this, but I know it's due well, to my editor on June 30th. And so it's probably it's probably not until it's probably not until December, actually. It's probably not coming out until December. They're trying to rapid release these books though. So Yeah. So Which is nice for us readers because it keeps everything kind of fresh in your mind yes. and you can keep up. Um, let's see. It's nice for the author too, because I can keep everything fresh in my <laughs> mind. <laughs> let's see. Yeah. I, I'm not exactly sure when that's coming out I, and I don't have the list on me. It's packed up in my, in all of my office stuff. If anybody wants to come and unpack for me, you know, feel free. <laughs> I am checking on Amazon now to see if there is a date showing. Um, I did check earlier and I remember that it said pre-order coming soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, Nothing it's not cool. showing up there because it, it actually, the link actually takes you to hunted girl and okay. not to. I be um, yeah. I believe killed, it right? is at the end of this year. It's before it's sometime between September and December. So so for you guys wanting to dive in to Damaging Secrets, this one is available now. I do highly recommend that you guys check it out. It's very good. The second book in the series is Hunted Girl. It is available for pre-order now, and you guys can snag that one on Amazon as well. Um, I have not read this one yet, but it's on my to-do list for this weekend, so I can't wait to dive into it. Tell us what book two is about. Okay, so in book one, we learn that Rachel has a past that's mm -hmm. pretty tragic, and she mm -hmm. moved to Georgia from Chicago to honor that past commitment and get a, and escape the memories. Mm -hmm. um, so in and it, you don't really get find out all of the details on that right away in book one but in book two that past comes to find her and so she has she has to deal with it um and what she what she thought she had settled she didn't settle but because it's very emotional for her she doesn't see things clearly and mm -hmm. she's misinterpreting other things that are ha other crimes that are happening mm -hmm. and 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 almost being selfish like that's because of me she takes blame for everything because mm -hmm. she's got so much guilt about the things that have happened um but she has to figure out how to separate the crimes that are happening and the people that are there from her past and she has to find a solution that accommodates both of those but she she doesn't you know she in the first book no one she doesn't think people believe her she knows what's happening 
this crime that's happened in the first book. She knows it. And all these, you know, good old boy police officers are like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're, you know, this is the South. You know, we don't get you, know, you just you know, we do things our way. And in the second book, they're like, all right, maybe you're you're on to something here. Mm -hmm. And she ends up being wrong about a few things, which frustrates her. But ultimately, she gets it right. Um, but I can't really tell you what it all is because that kind of gives away what happens in the first book, which, you know, is a key point that will keep mm -hmm. you reading if you don't know. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it involves love and tragedy, which, you know, every, every book has some form of love and tragedy in it. Um, mm -hmm. but, but really the second book is about, aside from the actual plot, is about Rachel letting go of her past and starting her real life in the present, you know, her life in the present. Um, and that's really hard for her because the past is all she knows. Mm -hmm. So being able to take that step and have that trust and faith is a big deal for her. And she finally has relationships with people um, that mean something to her in this town. She has them back in Chicago, but in this fictional town and, mm -hmm. um, in Georgia, she doesn't have that. And so she's finally started to get that. She's become close with her partner, Bishop. Um, she's close to the chief of police. She has a best friend. So she's she has reason to make things right. And that's, that's what she ultimately does. Is there anything you can tell us about the third book in the series, Overkill? Yes, I can. So in the last, in the second book, it ends with her being asked to be on a provisional task force for the DEA. Um, and provisional task force are, are when sheriffs or police departments have officers that are deputized just to work on the specific case. Mm -hmm. So she's asked to be on a specific case. And then on the third book, it jumps forward in time. It's been two years. She mm -hmm. worked that case. And now they've asked her to come back for another case. Um, and it's a Mexican cartel case, but you know, for, um, drug use in, in my area, the, her main, her city is, is based on a city called Milton, Georgia, which mm -hmm. is 10 minutes from my house. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's interacting in the fake Milton. Cause I can't, I don't want to call it Milton because mm -hmm. the first book had a lot of politicians in it. And I know a lot of the politicians in Milton. And I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to cross that line in any way, but Forsyth County, where I live right now, is is strong and it's a big it's a big part of this book. And she's she's stepping out of her comfort zone and has to has to go undercover as a counselor in a high school. But if you remember anything from the first book, Rachel doesn't really get along with teenagers. She doesn't right. get them. She doesn't have the patience for them. Mm -hmm. She thinks they're all entitled. Um, and where she works, they're very well. It's a very wealthy community. It's a small mm -hmm. town very politically connected and very wealthy. So these yes. kids think they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. and she can't stand that. Um, so she has to go and be a counselor <laughs> in a school and she's freaked out about that. Um, so there's a fine line be for her between being a police officer and being a school counselor. And she struggles with not crossing that, you know, she's, she's mm -hmm. trying to stay a counselor. Um, but it's it's about it's about you know the hot topics today. It's about kids and drug use and mm -hmm. the Mexican cartel, which is very. This area we have a, a huge drug problem. Um, it's growing you know leaps and bounds, unfortunately. And and mm -hmm. this book deals with um, heroin and cocaine use. And I had a brother that died from heroin use back in 1991. So I, it, it hits close to home for me. So it's been. A challenge to write it emotionally, but it's been mm -hmm. it's been healing in a lot of ways for me. Mm -hmm. you know, I know that I know how drug addiction works, and seeing seeing it in these kids in the book, and seeing how Rachel handles it has been has been good for me. I've been I've learned a lot. I've there's a lot of stuff out there in this world that we don't even know about. So it's it's pretty scary when you when you dig deep and and find out things that I, I've been meeting with a DEA instructor who has given me all kinds of information and, um, you know, <laughs> reviewed past cases and things with me and mm -hmm. gone over their, you know, their presentations on them and things. And it's, um, they do some serious stuff. 
It's pretty wow. crazy. Yeah. So um, I feel like I've got a lot of good material to work with for the story. So, so we'll see. Do you um, anticipate additional books in this series as well? There's going to be one more after Overkill. That's what we're contracted for. Um, mm -hmm. So far, the series is doing pretty well. Uh, the first Good. book has done, has done really well. Um, so, and the, the publisher is primarily a mystery and thriller. Well, they're only a mystery and thriller publisher, mm -hmm. um, but they do publish my cozies. I'm their only cozy author. So they really want me to push this series. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they'll ask me to do another one because writing, you know, you have to, you have to get those cozies out fairly quickly mm -hmm. um, to keep the readers coming back. But these other ones take longer. So right. writing two series like this might be tough, um, but they, they, we have discussed that a little bit. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I believe that this series will continue after four books. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. So, so we'll see, but good mm -hmm. things are happening for Rachel. She's, she's traveling down roads. She wasn't familiar with it, you know, for a while. So it's going to be, it's entertaining. So. Well, we have a couple of listeners with us tonight. Both have read your book. That is Jenny Bynum and Mary Eager is with us as well. Um, Mary actually won a copy of your book when you weren't able to come on before. I still went ahead and did a show and talked about the book. And at the end, I gave away a copy. So she actually got an ebook copy um, okay. from me and she has read it. Of course, Jenny has read everything as well. Let me scoot back up through these messages and see if we have any questions. I know I saw a couple um, pop in here from time to time. Girls, if you have any questions about any of the books, any of the series, um, new, old, whatever, or about the cats and dogs. <laughs> Go right ahead and pop those questions over there. Um, let's see. Both of them love the book. Um, I know I saw a question in here somewhere. I can't read it. No, <laughs> it's a white background. <laughs> let's see. There we go. Mary says that she loved the Lieutenant's wife from Damaging Secrets. Um, Savannah. Yes, Savannah. <laughs> um, I liked her. She was kind of like a bless your heart, kiss my butt kind of woman. And I yeah. like that. You know? <laughs> you know, she just, she had that about her. You know, she was sweet and she was charming, but. She wasn't taking any crap off of you. Yep. Um, I, which seems to be a common theme for your for your side character. Yep. I really like that. When when I first moved here, I was in the health insurance industry and I had clients in Macon, Georgia. And I'd never been to Macon. I didn't know where Macon was. So I drove out there. Um, felt like I was going hours away and it really wasn't that far. But the it, the guy that I met with introduced me to the debutantes and cotillion and all this stuff. And we sat and talked about that. Mm -hmm. And that is Savannah. She's, you know, she was, she went to cotillion. She's grown up with these girls that, you know, they had their, their coming out parties and mm -hmm. you know, wore their big dresses and they know all the dances, you know, and they're, you know, she knows how to sip her tea and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And she can't stand these fake people that move to the South and think that they're Southern like me. <laughs> so, but, you know, so she is blessing everybody's hearts because she sees all the fakeness where she lives now because she knows mm -hmm. what a true Southern woman is like. And she doesn't think these women are like that. And her husband, her husband is the lieutenant in Damaging Secrets, but he becomes the chief in the second book. Mm -hmm. So she has to, she has to play a little image you know, she has a little image to maintain now mm -hmm. that she just doesn't care about. She just <laughs> still says and does what she thinks. And in the third book, she's, um, you know, she she's trying to get Rachel to have a life outside of work. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things she's doing is ordering her stitch fix clothing because all Rachel wears is funny black tops, you know, black t-shirts and jeans and boots. Mm -hmm. um, 
So she's been ordering her stitch fix boxes and sending them to her. And so that's been a challenge for Rachel because there's patterns <laughs> of things and she's, you know, she didn't, she didn't know how to do that, you know? So it's, but Savannah is, you know, she's the woman that'll wear the, the big hats and, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, but, but she will, she will look you up and down and smile, you know, but, but she is blessing you, you know, two ways sideways. Yes. There's a lot happening behind that smile. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I like that. I think she's great. So. Jenny posted a comment back when we were talking about the Lily Sprayberry series yeah. and Bonnie she had the gun. Bonnie <laughs> had the gun and that cracked her up. Yeah. Um, there is also a shotgun scene in um, Chantilly Adair um, when the girls are worried about. Oh, um, yes. Yes. Thelma. When the girls are worried about somebody coming after Chantilly yeah. and so they all come over to the house and. I'm awful with names, but um, oh, what is her name? It's Thelma, isn't it? Thelma and Thelma and Del, Del. and the yeah. other and one, Olivia. the younger girl. Olivia. Yes, Olivia. Olivia. Yes, no, they, no. the three of them come. <laughs> I, I'm horrible with names. Um, the three of them come over, and Thelma is an older lady who loves to wear um, Dolly Parton styled wigs, and she's an absolute hoot. Um, and yeah, she shows up with the shotgun. She's fully prepared to protect her friend Chantilly. And she shoots the gun and everything. And I just, I mean, that was like the best part of that entire story. And probably, I, I don't even know which, which book it was in, but I mean, hello, that stuck. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a toughie. She's a toughie. So I forgot about that. Gosh, I, I, I you know, I, I forget. I know the characters, but I confuse them all because I've got several series, and mm -hmm. you know, and and why I have a Mel, a Bell, and a Dell in. Oh my you know, gosh! I never yeah. thought about that until yeah. you said it. So oh, that I messes agree. me up constantly, <laughs> constantly. So I have to be very careful that Bell is in the Abby O'Dell series, and I I always write Mel in that series and I have to go back and I have to search for M-E-L in word, you know, make sure that I change them because I always mess that up. No, it's not, it's not that it's Lily, not in the Abbey. See, I can't get my, I was, about, I was waiting for you to finish before I corrected you on that one. That, that I did catch. Yeah. I, that, oh gosh. Yeah. I got to get my book straight. But I think that I'm right. It's, it's Lily. It's best yes. friend is, is, is Mel. No, it's Belle. Oh, good Belle. Lord. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> Thank you. We'll talk about something you can't mix up. Um, <laughs> Mary says, anyone who says that pets don't have personalities <laughs> has never had one. My, I have three dogs and all three of them are completely different. Um, yep. I have a little mixed breed dog and she is the smallest one in the house but she thinks she's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. She barks and growls like she weighs a hundred pounds when, um, especially now I've worked from home for the last year. So they've gone very accustomed to that. Yeah. And she feels like now she has to be the guard dog. So yeah. when the FedEx people come um, <laughs> and they, they, we have our front yard is fenced in. And it's probably like three foot from the front door. And we have a ring set up at the fence. So people mm -hmm. stop at the fence normally instead of yeah. coming up to the door. And so um, getting out the door to get to the fence to get whatever the package or mail may be is a feat all on its own. Because I have two large dogs and then this one who wants to eat whoever is out there. Yeah. <laughs> And she goes out there and they're like, oh, look at that cute little dog. And I go, I wouldn't reach over the fence if I were you. <laughs> um, because like her hair stands up into the spiked yeah. mohawk down her back. <laughs> and she's just barking and fussing and jumping. And then here comes this big old long-eared bloodhound. And she's just like, hello. <laughs> you know, and then my lab comes out and she's just like, I'm here to pee. That's all. Don't mind me. It's got to pee. And so, I mean, That's but so they're all so different. Yeah, um, yeah. Just like you were saying with um, Pony and with 
Allie. Now you have cats as well. And in yeah. your book, you have a cat named Cooper. Yeah. And because I stalk you, I know that you have a cat named Cooper who appeared yeah. on your Facebook page from time to time. Um, how long have you had Cooper? Okay. So Cooper is, um, he was my brother's cat. Mm -hmm. I also had Gracie before, who was my brother, same brother's dog. Um, but he has a daughter who has is very allergic, and they they thought she had eczema for years. So at nine, the doctor finally figured out it was not eczema; it was a severe allergy to cats and dogs. So mm -hmm. at nine years old, Cooper came to live with us. Um, Cooper is the coolest cat ever. He doesn't know that he's a cat. He <laughs> thinks that he's a person. Um, and that's why I write the character, the Cooper character, like he thinks he's a person, because mm -hmm. that's how I picture my cat. I picture him walking around going, dude, what's up? Yeah, I mean, he's just so <laughs> he's just so laid back. Um, all he cares about is food and sitting on your, he sits right here because he wants mm -hmm. attention and he snores. Um, but he's a Burmese. So he's, 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 he's 15 or something now, 16 now, I think. Mm -hmm. Um but he used, they describe Burmese cats as silky bricks because they're really soft, but they're dense with muscle. Mm -hmm. And he's lost, like me, he's lost his muscle as he's aged, but he's still silky. But he's, he's like nine pounds, if even anymore. Um, but he's just, he's just, you know, he'll let you, you can, you can hold, I, I cradle him like this and hold him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can put hats on him and, you know, I put sweaters on him. Um, he's just let you do whatever you want to him. But he, when he has his food, he's like my friend and Mel. He just, he makes noise as he eats. <laughs> and every single morning, bless his heart, at 5.15, he comes upstairs and he can't meow. His meow is like, eh. He's <laughs> <it's> literally, eh. <laughs> and so every morning at 5.15, oh, he stands wow. by my side of the bed and goes, man. I'm like, okay, Cooper. Cause he wants his food and he will stay there and do that until you get up and go and feed him. And oh yeah. Cats are demanding. Oh yeah. He's very demanding. Um, he taunts meatball, our other cat. And we've had meatball three years longer than three years longer than we had Cooper. Meatball mm -hmm. grew up with other cats too. We got her when she was three. Um, but she hates Cooper because Cooper's a boy and Cooper will, Cooper's the cat that will not be anywhere in sight. And then you turn around and you almost step on him. He's stealth. He comes up and he is right next to you. So he's constantly stalking her and just stares at her. Like she'll be across the room and he'll just go. And she's over there, you know, freaking out. Um, and then every once in a while he'll ch chase her. And she, ha she is twice his size, but she's so scared of him. Poor, poor cat. I feel so bad for her. But um, she's she's been trying to get in the door since we started talking. But um, but Cooper's yeah he's he's I think he was probably um, I I liken him to Spicoli from um, Fast Times at Ridgemont Fast High. Time, yeah. Yes. Um, Look at me pulling that out of thin air. I can't remember Bonnie's <laughs> name or anybody else, but I, I got that. I, and I've only <laughs> seen parts of that movie. I never watched that whole movie. But that's how I picture Cooper is, is like that like that guy just, you know, <laughs> laid back stoned all the time. And, and obviously Cooper doesn't do drugs, thankfully. But if he could, I mean, he does his, he does his cat, his, you know, his catnip stuff. So that <laughs> makes him crazy. So, but yeah, he... Um, I really think that he thinks he's human. That's hilarious. So, he's a good kitty. He's a good kid. Allie loves him. Loves him. So that is her cat. Cooper That's doesn't. Sweet. Yeah, Cooper doesn't really care. He's like, all right, you can lay next to me. So. <laughs> That's too cute. Well, I have had an absolute blast talking to you, as always. <laughs> um, congratulations on the 40-something books. Hello. Way to go. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and congrats on the upcoming release. I can't Thank wait you. to read the art copy this weekend and check it out. 
Um, ladies, if you guys are interested in reliving any of the greatness, you can um, go over to Audible and check out the audiobooks um, for Damaging Secrets and also Hunted Girl, I saw, is already yeah, available. Yeah, it's not wow. out on, on accident. So <laughs> that works. So. Um, so, yeah, if you want a little sneak peek, um, definitely head over there and check it out. Good luck with the move. I hope it is not too yeah. stressful and that you Thank get you. settled quickly. Um, the new place is gorgeous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a long weekend out of it and come pick me out a room. <laughs> <laughs> I can Don't have worry. a room and probably like a deck part to myself and you would never even know I'm there. <laughs> Come on, you're welcome. <laughs> cool. um, it has been a great time having you here. Thanks again. Ladies, if you're interested in checking out any of the other books, make sure you head over to the website. The link is posted for you guys over in the comments. And we will see you definitely have you on again. We'll do it again when you have Perfect. some stuff coming out in the fall. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I had a good time. Bye. You too. Thanks. See ya.